Man, what is happening, my YouTube family? Of course, it is your boy, B New, uh, coming at you on what I believe is this Wednesday morning, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's been tough for me to even keep up with the days the past uh, week, uh, just because I've been going through a lot, uh, just uh, involving my family and ones that's near and dear to me. So, as always, let me send out positive vibrations to you all, whoever may be listening. I hope that you have a very blessed and positive and a favorable day. Uh, in a week for that matter, but you know, please send positive vibrations and blessings and prayers as well towards myself and my loved ones because we all go through this thing called life and it can come at you hard and fast and then you can really see, we have fun on this channel. We talk about sports and the games and you know, the Lakers and LeBron and Kevin Durant and everything else, but then we can see how minute all of these things are in life when it comes to uh, trials and tribulations concerning one's loved ones so uh moving on uh just to go ahead and jump right into it as we all know uh the brooklyn nets and the uh, milwaukee bucks had a game on yesterday a very pivotal game five uh because of course as we all know the series was tied two to two and uh if you looked at uh, my video prior to uh the game uh, that I think I made on, not yesterday, but the day before, because as I was saying, I missed out on the show yesterday. I was going through uh, just just a lot. Uh, just couldn't find myself to even get motivated. But I, I do apologize for that for those of you who are faithful viewers. But uh, anyway, uh, it was a very pivotal game, two to two. And uh, in my video, I did say uh, that Kevin Durant would be could be capable of pulling it off if he went out and had a monstrous performance uh, and that is exactly what he did uh and there's a lot of takeaways that i got from this game that we're going to get into but the main thing was uh that challenge that was put on kevin durant and he definitely stepped up to the plate and delivered in an all-time epic playoff performance uh he could have had 50 points uh when he went to the line i'm not sure if he knew he needed those last two free throws uh, to get to 50 points so we could have a 50 point triple dub but what he did do was hit the important free throw which made them go up by four to actually seal the game to prevent Milwaukee from going down there and hitting the three and tying it up uh, and going into overtime and we'll get into all the, the, the ins and outs and X's and O's in just a moment but uh, first and foremost just want to give props to Kevin Durant for being able to put the team on his back and I really want to say that the Milwaukee Bucks should be ashamed of themselves for not being able to pull out that victory because it's hard in the game of sports to have one man beat you and that's what I preach time in and time out for all these people that you know want to bash LeBron James and say well he got beat and you know whatever when they not realizing that this is all a team effort and you can say KD put on that monstrous performance last night in which he did but without the shooting of Jeff Green, uh, I think going seven out of eight from three-point land uh, and hitting all those timely threes to put them back in the game and actually put them up by four in the crucial part of the game when I want to say they were only up by one once they had taken the lead. So Jeff Green was hitting all these shots, and I was wondering, where the hell was this Jeff Green at uh, in Cleveland? <laughs> You know what I mean? And I watched Jeff Green over his career ever since he was at Boston and had the surgery and, you know, been around from different teams. And, of course, when he came to Memphis, uh, to the Memphis Grizzlies, I was very excited because I knew what he was capable of doing. But it just seems like Jeff Green can never get into a groove for a full season to solidify himself on the team. And that's why he's often traded. And the reason why people will take on his trade is because he's more he's a more than capable shooter. And not only that, he's capable of getting to the hole and finishing. And, uh, you know, he can handle the ball pretty well. Uh, so, you know, Jeff, Jeff Green, uh, he performed wonderful last night and I'm not saying that oh you know taking anything away from Kevin Durant's performance but my point is when you're going to win a game you're going to need more than one person to show up and basically what happened is Jeff Green from from the beginning of the game because Kevin Durant started off not so hot but if you look at the entirety of the game if you go back and rewatch it what you will see is Jeff Green was consistent throughout all four quarters and hitting any open any open shot that that got to him uh and I won't even lie, while I was watching the game, through the course of the game, I kind of felt that Milwaukee was going to end up losing the game because 
they should have been up by way more than what they were up by. When they were up by 14 or 15, it seemed like they should have been up by 25. And that's what you have to do to a great team because a 14 or 15 point lead in today's NBA, I mean, even back in the day, it's not necessarily good. But in today's NBA, it's definitely nothing because you make a few three pointers, you cut that 15 point lead down to six or seven. Then all of a sudden you got a ball game and then you got the crowd into it. And I kind of anticipated that happening, uh, you know, into the third quarter. I knew that Brooklyn would come out uh, and score probably more points uh, than they did. And then on into the fourth quarter, they did the same thing as well. Uh, and a lot of that was a poor uh, offensive strategy by Milwaukee. Uh, the thing is, Milwaukee, should, like I said, should be ashamed of themselves because Milwaukee had them on the ropes and they didn't take advantage of, of all the different mismatches they had because James Harden clearly was not himself. And I thought from the beginning when James Harden was out there and clearly wasn't himself and didn't have any explosiveness, uh, couldn't really get to the rack, uh, shots were well off. You could tell this was not the typical James Harden. He could make free throws because he's just standing there and he's a great shooter, so he could make free throws. He did make some great passes uh, on some backdoor cuts uh, in the fourth quarter that were very timely to get Brooklyn in the game and get the crowd going. So he had, of course, a good court vision of what he did on those passes. But if you notice, Kevin Durant was really directing traffic on some of those because he was setting side screens and directing traffic to backdoor cuts so Harden can hit them. So that was all great communication by Kevin Durant uh, on his end. So not only was Kevin hitting shots, uh, he was playing good defense on Middleton. Uh, he was finding open shooters uh, with, with the 10 assists that he had. Uh, he was crashing the boards, able to get the rebounds. I mean, he just had a great overall game. And that's something that should not come as a surprise to anyone. Uh, but when you're talking about the reason why I didn't think that they would win the game is because they were minus Harden and Kyrie. So with that being said, you would think that uh, that Milwaukee was going to be able to win the game. And they started off winning it, but then when Harden uh, decided to play, you're thinking, okay, well, maybe now the, the favor's going to turn in that uh, the Nets. But since Harden could not even explode, could not even get to the hole or get to the cup, uh, then it seems like the Bucks really should have won. So Kevin Durant was able to do uh, what I thought he probably could not do is win without Harden and Kyrie because basically Harden wasn't there. He made a couple of timely plays, but for the most part, he wasn't there. And the Milwaukee Bucks should be a damn shame to themselves uh, for losing that game because they were basically playing five on four the whole game. And another big mad props to Kevin Durant was he played the entirety of the game. And I thought because he did not come out at all, that fatigue would eventually set in on him at some point in the fourth quarter, and it didn't. And I don't know if you guys remember the one possession where Harden just held the ball for so long, way past the top of the key, just held it, held it, held it, held it, held it, and then almost lost it. And I'm thinking, what a horrible possession because they were up by one. And uh, I thought that they was going to not score and then end up giving the ball back over to Milwaukee. But he passes it over to Kevin Durant and he hits an amazing shot from the top of the key with barely any time on the clock and hits a great shot. So, I mean, like I said, big props up to Kevin Durant. Uh, LeBron James, of course, tweeted last night, mad props to Kevin Durant uh, in so many words for being able to uh, wield his team to victory like that. But going back to what I was saying, Milwaukee did not take advantage of, of the mismatches because clearly uh, Drew Holiday had Harden in the mismatch every time that he tried to guard him because Harden didn't really have any lateral movement whatsoever. And considering that he didn't, Drew Holiday was pretty much bullying him each time he went to the hole. And then there were some instances in where Drew Holiday was just settling for jump shots or just settling for uh, – three-point shots when he easily could have took him uh, to the hole and forced the issue, but he did not. And that was the same case with Giannis because on some plays, you know, Giannis had Harden on the mismatch on the switch in the post, and instead of him continuing to back, now imagine as big as Giannis is, he should have backed him down, backed him down, backed him down, and took the shot. Harden even waved off the double team because Harden, like, I know this guy moves. I feel like I got quicker hands. I can strip him, which he did strip Giannis at one point in the open court, but Giannis was able to recover. But as you all know, they had some one-on-one -on -one beef with each other because Giannis, uh, Harden said he was very skilled, whereas Giannis just big and run around and jump and dunk. And I'm pretty sure they took note of that. So Giannis really should have had something to prove to Harden. 
when Harden got him in the one-on-one and Harden uh, backed off the double team and said he didn't need the help. And then Giannis bails him out by turning around and taking a fadeaway jump shot. And that's one thing that I thought Giannis did good throughout the game was not taking so many threes because he was just taking three at the three, uh, which were not good shots for him. So a couple of times he didn't take the three, even though the fans were begging him to, and he called for the high pick and roll and was able to, uh, you know, give a give and go and, uh, you know, have another one of their players, I believe Middleton maybe hit the three pointer. But at the end of the day, uh, you have to go in and you have to challenge James Harden. You cannot take a fit, especially with one and a half minutes left in the game of a close game where you're down by one. Why in the world would you take a fadeaway uh, over James Harden when you could just press the issue? And I know a lot of people were saying that he's afraid of the free throw line, which he hit one out of two in the clutch, uh, which that may have been the case. And I know at the very end of the game where they still had an opportunity only down by two, they had an opportunity uh, to go ahead and put the game away. Uh, I mean, to to come up and tie the game. Uh, and of course, Middleton, he got into the paint. And to me, and it's just my personal opinion, I hadn't heard anybody else say this, but to me, I think Middleton actually uh, should have took that shot once he got into the paint because he was that close and he really had his man beat. And I think a little floater, a little teardrop floater from that close in, he could have easily made it. But of course, he decided to kind of do a handoff uh, he decided to kind of do a handoff uh, to uh, to Kumpu. Of course, he mishandled the ball, and they lose it. And, of course, Kevin Durant comes up with the ball fittingly. But the thing is, a lot of people are saying, well, Otakumpo, uh you know, was nervous. He tried to – I know Charles Barkley after the game said, well, he was nervous. He tried to rush too quick because he thought that uh, he was going to get fouled. He didn't want to go to the line. Well, you still got to take your time, gather and shoot because that could have been a chance for an and one, first of all. But second of all, I kind of disagree with that. I just think he fumbled the ball because he wasn't ready uh, that he actually thought Middleton was going to take that shot. And I think Middleton should have took that shot because in the event that he misses that shot, it's not like it's going to come far off of the rim. And Kevin Durant was actually in a uh, good enough position to where he easily, I mean, uh, Giannis was in good enough position where he easily could have got a put back, maybe an and one and a tip in, who knows, because there was plenty of time left on the clock. But for Middleton to, to pass it over to Giannis, I think was a bad move. And I'm not blaming, I know everybody puts it on Giannis, but I think Middleton should have took that shot, especially if he was to get fouled on the shot, knowing that he is a more capable uh, free throw shooter. So, you know, Either way, uh, but the way it's really looking right now, I know they had to let a lot of wind out of Brooklyn sales, but you would imagine going back to Brooklyn uh, tomorrow night, I mean, going back to Milwaukee tomorrow night is not going to heal James Harden's hamstring. So he still looked like he only going to be 60% of himself out there. So Milwaukee needs to do what they need to do to exploit that. And then Kevin Durant, when he gets to cooking like that, force the others to beat you, especially when they're going to be on the road in Milwaukee. Force the others to beat you. Uh, they decided to play Kevin Durant straight up most of the whole night. They never, they rarely came with a double team. Uh, I would have forced the ball into the hands of a Joe Harris. What I actually would have did was double team him off Harden's man, have Middleton uh, come over for the double team. And then if he does kick it over to Harden for the open shot, then so be it. You could tell his shot was off because he could barely hit the rim and he was throwing away air balls because he's not in game shape from missing all these games and he can't go full speed because of the injury to his hamstring. So for for the coach uh, not to double off of Harden's man not once the entire game and double KD and force the ball out of his hands and force the others to beat you, I think was idiotic. Uh, you can see in the Phoenix series, that's how they chose to guard LeBron. They forced the others to beat you. And time and time again, when LeBron forced uh, when LeBron was forced to pass, uh, the others simply could not make those shots. And we know they laid a lot of goose eggs as far as Caruso and Schroeder, uh, but that's the thing of the past. So we're just gonna focus on what's going on right now. And obviously uh, those others. Okay, I'm sorry about that. My video was interrupted by Amber Alert like seven different times. And then every time I tried to go back and redo the video, the Amber Alert came back in and interrupted my video again, which is 
very upsetting to me, but not nearly upsetting to whoever loved one that's lost for that child. So we pray uh, that that child is recovered soon. And I did look at the Amber Alert and see what area it was. And I am keeping my eyes peeled while I'm out here for anybody that fits that description. So uh, even though I'm upset about my video, I try to, uh, you know, not get too upset because the, there's always somebody that's dealing with something much worse than you are so at the end of the day it is what it is but back to what i was saying about jeff green or whatever i was saying i've been interrupted so many damn time who knows what i was saying i think what i was saying is they never got the ball out of uh kevin durant's hands on the double team never once did they get the ball out of his hands uh, and double team, they allowed him to play one on one. He could be uh, PJ Tucker. I understand the coach might want it to uh, not uh, bring the double because he was afraid that Joe Harris might just start heating up. But he hasn't been the past two or three games, so live with it and and bring the double team from Harden. Let Harden try to beat you. Let Harden put the ball on the floor because obviously he's not himself. So bring the double from Harden's man and force Harden to beat you instead of Kevin Durant. I would rather for Andrew Harden to uh, try to do something than Kevin Durant because I honestly don't feel that uh, Harden is going to be nearly even at 65 or 70 percent of himself uh, come. Uh, uh, what's this? Come Friday night. So, if you think about it, uh, I still think Milwaukee can win this series, but they're just gonna have to play a lot better and a lot smarter. Stop making the dumb decisions that they kept making. Even Charles Barkley called them a dumb, uh, a dumb team. Which I, at halftime, I think, and I was thinking the same thing. But now I really do think it because out of all the times that you had to, out of all the times that you had to switch your defensive style up and your strategy and to attack and to do the things you did you never made the necessary adjustments and y'all i'm telling y'all what right now usually i have a good route rolling on but because of these amber alerts and all these things i done took a couple of wrong turns and i feel like i'm in wrong turn too and i just don't want any of these gremlins uh you know whatever these things is to pop out on you to move it so i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on around and get on away from around here because i don't even know where i am but at the end of the day like I said, with this game, uh, the Brooklyn Nets could e uh, could easily take care of this on the next game. But like I said, I don't think they will because their role players have not played well in Milwaukee and James Harden is nearly not himself. And put it down in the comments below if you think James Harden should play the next game if you are a Brooklyn Nets fan, if you really care about the well-being of the team. Because if they are already up, maybe they can go out and try to win a game without further injuring him and then he can rest that hamstring. And if he's truly only going to be a decoy, it may not be to their best advantage to put him in for the next game. So we shall see how that goes. But uh, like I was saying, you know, with uh, Kevin Durant, he had a phenomenal game. I'm not trying to take away anything that he does. Uh, one thing about Kevin Durant, I respect the hell out of because he gets to his spot. He knows uh, exactly how to score. And right now, uh, I would say that he's top one and two best players in the world easily, uh, if not the best, because of his offensive prowess and the things that he's doing on both ends of the court right now. But one thing I do not like, and I must point out, and forgive me if I already said it, because my video got cut off so many times. Forgive me if I didn't say, if, if I already said this was uh, uh, the play where they challenged it, where James Harden locked up with Brooke Lopez and locked his arm uh, and that was a very crucial part of the game because then you send James Harden to the line to get two crucial free throws and such a petty foul like that away from the ball with him locking his arm with somebody else and clearly uh, I would have liked to see that overturn and just call a double foul and jump it up you know or either just call a double foul like and that way you get a side out like nobody wants to uh, give them free throws be, uh, uh, reward them for free throws for something that's so stupid. Like, they're not fighting for the ball. It's just, oh, I'm locking you up and I'm falling away and doing all this stuff. Like, that's one reason why I respect Kevin Durant way more as a player and Kyrie because of their skill set and what they do uh, than James Harden. Because James Harden, he's phenomenal. But, like, that's why the league is looking into next year changing some of these rules or these weird shots that they do. Uh, that, that initiates contact and all that and they're going to clean the game up which I'll be very happy to see because he, he does that a lot uh, you know Luca does that a lot and I would like to see that get cleaned up but anyway my video keep getting cut off and I'm just sick and tired of it and I got a lot of things that I need to get to but you know send the positive vibrations towards me and send some positive vibrations towards my family and I'll do the same for you all and uh, you know it still turned out to be a great postseason that was a great game last night Hopefully the Utah game tonight will be good against the Clippers. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to come back and do a reactionary video to that as well. But at the end of the day, 
uh, it is what it is. I just got to fight through for what I'm what I'm going through, and we all gonna get through this together. So, uh, as always, this has been your boy B New. I'm just screaming right on to the real, and much love to y'all haters. I'm out.